Hi, it's Steve here again at the Life and Sad Ending channel, and today we're going to talk about somebody from England that you probably never heard of, but he was a fantastic entertainer, and his name was George Formby. George Formby was born George Hoy Booth in Wigan, County of Lancashire, England on May 26, 1904. His parents were James Lawler Booth and his wife Eliza. George's father was a very successful music hall comedian and singer who performed under the name George Formby, now known as George Formby Sr. When Ecken Smith ran second in the Derby last July, I was standing at the corner of the street. Formby Sr. suffered from a lung condition thought to be asthma, bronchitis, or tuberculosis. He would use his coughing as part of the humor in his act. In 1906, Formby Sr. was earning 35 pounds a week, which rose to 325 pounds a week by 1920. Hence, the young George grew up in a somewhat well-to-do home. George was removed from school at the age of seven and sent to become a stable boy in Middleham, England. Formby Sr. sent his son away to work as he was worried George would watch him on stage and he was against the boy following in his footsteps. After a year work, he was apprenticed as a jockey at Epsom where he ran his first professional races at the age of 10. Later in 1915, because of the First World War, Formby moved to Ireland where he continued as a jockey until November of 1918. Later that month, he returned to England and continued working as a jockey until 1921, although he never won a race. Sadly, on February 8, 1921, George's father, George Formby Sr., died from his lung condition. He was only 45 years old. He was buried in Warrington Cemetery. After his father's funeral, Eliza, his mother, took the young Formby to London to help him cope with his grief. While there, they visited the Victoria Palace Theater, where Formby Sr. had previously been so successful. They saw a performance by the comedian Tommy Dixon. Dixon was performing a copy of Formby Sr.'s act, using the same songs, jokes, costumes, and mannerisms, and billed himself as the new George Formby. The performance prompted Formby to follow in his father's profession, a decision which was supported by Eliza. As he had never seen his father perform live, Formby found the imitation difficult and had to learn his father's songs from records and the rest of the act and jokes from his mother. In 1921, Formby gave his first performance in the show he was billed as George Hoy, using his mother's maiden name. He explained later that he did not want the Formby name to appear in small print. His father's name was used in the posters and advertising, George Hoy being described as comedian, son of George Formby. Of course, George was not his father and was often booed and hissed at. In 1923, Formby started to play the ukulele and banjo ukulele, and he introduced them into his act and changed his stage name to George Formby. While touring, he met Beryl Ingham, a champion clog dancer and actress. Formby and Beryl married two years later in 1924. Beryl took over as George's manager and changed aspects of his act, including the songs and jokes. She instructed him on how to use his hands and how to work the audience. She also persuaded him to take lessons in how to play the ukulele properly. By 1932, Formby signed a three-year deal with Decca Records. One of the songs he recorded was Chinese Laundry Blues, telling the story of Mr. Wu, which became one of his standard songs and part of a long-running series of songs about the character. Over the course of his career, Formby went on to record over 230 songs. With Formby's success on stage, Beryl decided in 1934 it was time for him to move into films. His first movie was Boots, Boots, Formby followed this up with Off the Dole in 1935. The financial success of the pictures led to Formby being given a seven-year contract which resulted in the production of 11 films where he played sort of a carefree Lancashire lad. Among them were No Limit and Keep Your Seats, Please. That movie had the song When I'm Cleaning Windows, which was soon banned by the BBC because of the sexually suggestive lyrics. However, in May 1941, Beryl informed the BBC that the song was a favorite of the royal family. The BBC relented and started to broadcast the song. Many other films followed, such as Feather Your Nest, Keep Fit in 1937, Icy Ice, It's in the Air, Come on George, and Turned Out Nice Again, among many others. Also, he had many popular songs, including Leaning on a Lamp Post, 
with my little stick of Blackpool rock and in my little snapshot album, just to name a few. Unfortunately, due to the copyright problems with YouTube, I'm unable to use much of his music in this video, even as a fair use, but you can check him out on YouTube. There's a lot of videos with him playing, and I think you might enjoy it. Check it out. Form B tried to enlist for active military service. However, the examining board rejected him as being unfit for medical reasons. He instead toured and entertained the troops extensively. He also gave many free and charity concerts to help with the war effort. He was awarded the OBE, Officer of the Order of British Empire, in the 1946 King's Birthday Honors List for his services to the forces during World War II. George Formby's film and recordings popularity waned through the late 1940s and 1950s, though he was still a huge draw on the shows and concerts he gave. A heavy smoker, Formby started to have health issues and suffered bouts of depression. His wife, Beryl, also had been diagnosed with cancer and was given a short time to live. Formby's final televised performance was a 35-minute BBC program, The Friday Show. It aired on December 16, 1960. Beryl's illness was worsening. On Christmas Eve 1960, two hours before the premiere of his new stage show Aladdin, Formby received a phone call from Beryl's doctor saying she was in a coma and was not expected to survive the night. Formby went through with the performance and was told early the next morning that Beryl had died. On Valentine's Day 1961, just seven weeks after Beryl's death, Formby and a 36-year-old school teacher announced their engagement. Eight days later, he suffered a heart attack and sadly, he died in Preston, England three weeks later on March 6, 1961. He was only 56 years old. Formby was buried alongside his father in Warrington Cemetery with over 150,000 mourners lining the route. Shortly after Formby's death, a small group of fans formed the George Formby Society, which had its first meeting at the Imperial Hotel Blackpool. Beatle George Harrison was a fan of Formby, and also a member of the society. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time, unless I come to my own sad ending. Oh, let George do it.